Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another project. Today I'm going to be creating a new rake of coaches from scratch. <laughs> I absolutely love the way the old pre-grouping railway companies all had their own unique design of passenger coach and they always had their own unique liveries to put onto those coaches. So I got to thinking, why don't I try and do something like that for my railway? So I've designed a whole rake of coaches. The designs are finished and I will show you those in just a second. And today's video is going to be about building those coaches and also putting a bit of a livery onto those coaches with my own little logos on them and everything. I'm really looking forward to it, but first we need to talk about the designs. And I started this project with a chassis, and this is the chassis I've come up with. With the previous mini coaches I made, I used a standard chassis that I designed for some freight wagons. But I didn't want to do that this time, I wanted to start from scratch and design a chassis specifically for coaches. So this is it, this is my final chassis design. It is the longest um, non-bogey chassis I've ever designed, and it's also got larger suspension springs, as is the case with uh, coaches of this sort. The underframe is much more like that of a coach as well. It uses the strength, I suppose, of a 3D printer to create these sort of cylinder things on the bottom. No idea what they are, but coaches like this tend to have them. And uh, this is obviously hard to do with injection molding, but with 3D printing, I can print those in situ, hopefully. It's got the NEM pockets pre-installed, so that should be nice and simple. Holes for buffers, I've got a new design of buffer, which I'm gonna put into those and also screw holes for fitting a body. I don't want to use those pegs anymore that I used to use. I think they're quite primitive. So these coaches will be held together with screws. As for the bodies, I've created three different bodies for these three coaches. This one is gonna be the third class standard body, and it is a fairly standard outer body, although to be fair, it does have a little bit more detail than I've done before. So it's got fully defined vents over the doors, which I'm hoping will print quite nicely. It's got quite intricate handrails around the doors based on this photo. I went to the National Railway Museum recently, and uh, that was a great help for researching new models. So I've tried to recreate those handrails anyway. I'm also particularly proud of the ends of this design because I got a good photo again at the NRM of uh, the, the end of a, a similar sort of coach with this curved handrail and the steps on the end and I've tried to recreate that as best I could from the photo. But the most detailed part of this design is the interior. So this is going to seat 12 passengers, eight on one side, four on the other and the passengers will board the coach at either end where there's also a little bit of space for them to store their luggage or whatever. The seats themselves, I'm really, really pleased with. They're fully defined with sort of curved edges rather than just straight edges so that they look like upholstery, I suppose. And there's also detailed armrests on them. I've also designed a new roof, and this roof is designed to fit on top of the body, but it doesn't include any upper body on it, as was the case with my previous coaches. The curved top of the body is all a part of the body itself, so that should be much better for painting and for realism. And the roof furniture is quite unusual again. Yet again, I based this on a photo at the NRF, so it was worth that trip, definitely. The roof furniture, though, comes from a different coach to the one I showed earlier, so it really is a mix and match. Anyway, body two is going to be a first class body, and on the outside, it is largely the same. In fact, I think it's exactly the same on the outside. But the interior has been upgraded as per first class. So you've got more armrests, armrests dividing all of the seats now. And of course there are tables as well. So it's a little bit more luxurious than third class. And then finally, the third body is a brake body. And the front end of this coach is the same as the third class coach with the same interior. But the brake end has no windows as per a regular looking brake coach. And it's got sort of blank decorative panels on the outside. 
and inside it's got a full brake interior. So it's got a couple of seats facing the other way for a brake man, a little bit of a table perhaps for paperwork or a timetable or something like that. It's got a fully detailed brake wheel designed to print in situ. I'm hoping that will look okay. And my favorite feature is the luggage for the passengers, which has been kindly stored in there. All sorts of different cases. They are quite detailed, again, specifically designed to the 3D printer that I'm gonna be using uh, for maximum effect. So those are all my designs for these new coaches, and I'm really looking forward to seeing them actually created now in the physical realm. So I think that's the next job. We're gonna get these bodies printed and see how they turn out. So here are the finished bodies, and overall I think I'm quite pleased with these. I've already taken them downstairs into the garden and sprayed them with a filler primer. I haven't been able to do much sanding on the bodies, so the bodywork is a little bit rough in places, but it is just really difficult to get into the small spaces. The roofs though were a bit easier, and of course it is quite important that these are smooth, so I have been able to sand those down and they look quite good. So the next task is going to be to paint them. And for that, safety first, I'm gonna rig up some fans to extract the air from this room. And also I've got this mask. Did you get that? I said, we're gonna get started. So please excuse the noise during this section. I've got some fans running, uh, like I say. So uh, that's the noise, if anyone's wondering. So the main color for these coach bodies is going to be a sort of deep, rich blue, which I think will look really nice. But that paint hasn't arrived yet. I'm hoping it will arrive today, so I should be able to finish these today. But I don't need that paint to begin with, because to start with, I'm gonna start by spraying the interior. But of course I need to protect the exterior because if I'm using a blue, if I get the brown interior paint all over the exterior, uh, then it's gonna be a nightmare to cover that up. So the first thing I've got to do is put some masking tape over the windows and then over the rest of the outer body just to make sure I don't get any paint on it. Okay, so it should look like that. I just need it so that none of the external bodywork is visible or exposed. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the rest of the coaches so that I can spray the inside with this mud brown all in one go. So this is really quite nice and easy for a bit of a warm up. Very, very straightforward. I'm just covering the entire interior with mud brown. Then of course, later on, I'm going to come back and add some more detail. I'll paint the seats and the armrests and a bit of detail inside the brake. And here's just a little look at it uh, now that it's been done. Yeah, nice even coverage, not much to it. I can move on. So these coaches are going to have a little bit of white lining on the sides, I've decided. And so to match that, I want the ends of the roofs to be white as well. So I'm starting this process by masking off the ends. And then, of course, I can just spray them white without worrying about getting white paint onto the main roof. While this dries, I'm now masking off the body windows again, but this time on the inside uh, in readiness for painting the main body. Okay, so all of the windows are now covered on the inside, and I'm gonna be honest, that was incredibly tedious. But now I'm going to start to paint the interiors. So I'm going with a fire red for the seats, which is quite a sort of dark red. So let's give that a go. I'm gonna be painting these by hand, of course. <laughs> There you go. So hopefully you get the rough idea of what I'm going for there. Uh, perhaps need a bit more paint on that green case on the top when it's dried. 
but I'll get the rest of the interiors painted and then hopefully I can start doing the outer bodywork. There you are, that's the general idea, not dreadfully neat and tidy unfortunately, but I'm hoping if you just catch a glimpse of these interiors as the coaches run along then uh, yeah, it'll be better than just an unpainted interior. So now I've got to cover the top with tape so that I can paint the outer bodies. I am planning to add some transfers to these bodies and those will need to sit onto a white base. So the first job for the outer body is a coat of white paint. Now that the ends of the roofs have had a chance to dry, I'm now applying a coat of grey to the main roof. This is going to be the final roof colour, including the roof furniture. Yeah, I'm going to have it all grey, I think. Back to the bodies now, and for the benefit of those transfers I mentioned, uh, it's going to be a round logo that I've made just for these, I'm applying tiny little 3D printed round masks in the correct position, and that will keep those areas white while I spray the rest of the body blue. Yay, the paint has turned up. I probably sound like I'm in a tunnel, but I've just got my mask on. Anyway, it doesn't look a whole lot like it did on the website, but it's not prototypical anyway, so let's try it. So it turns out the blue is quite a nice shade, actually. It's quite royal looking, almost, of which I wasn't really going for, but, you know, I'll take it. Uh, so it's not quite what I expected, that's for sure. But I do think this is going to work quite nicely in the end, hopefully. So as I mentioned, I do want a white pinstripe across the sides of the bodies. So to do this, I'm just going to mask off that area. I've got to cover up everything except the area I want the white stripe to be on. Uh, so it's just a case of being quite steady with the masking tape and then hoping for the best. Now to apply this lining, I'm starting by adding a bit more blue first because this creates a better edge. Uh, one of my viewers actually recommended I do this and it does work very well. So there's a, another tip for you. And then of course, once the blue has gone on and it's had a bit of time to dry, I'm going ahead and adding the white. Okay, moment of truth, has the pinstriping worked? So peeling off the masking tape, this is the result. And I'm very, very happy with this. I think that's pretty neat, to be honest, given that it's masked. So uh, I think that's going to work. I can now go ahead and do the rest. So to finish off the main body painting, I'm just now picking out some of the detail on the ends. I'm doing these things in black and I'm painting the steps and also the lamp irons. I thought about doing the grab rail as well, but I'm not going to be very steady with that curved surface, so I've got a choice. I can either leave it blue or try and paint it and make it look messy, so I think I'm going to leave it blue. If I get better at this one day, then maybe I can start painting things like that, but I have to be realistic with what I'm actually capable of. Now it's time for the tricky part, and that is, of course, the transfers. So I won't go into too much detail on the process, but these are printed. I designed them, first of all, to the right size, printed them onto laser water slide paper, and then, of course, I cut them out, soak them in water for about 10 seconds, apply a little bit of micro set onto the coach bodies, and then put the transfer into place, add a bit of micro sole onto the top of it, use my paintbrush or a cotton bud, whatever, to straighten them out, that's the tricky part, and then you leave them to set. Now, to be absolutely clear, because when you see these later, they won't look amazing, these are not going to be perfect, and I know that. They're so small, I'm not really very good at getting them absolutely level, but I'm happy to have a go, you know, it's always good to have a challenge, and uh, at least I will have had fun doing this, that's the main thing. So the next step was to apply a coat of varnish to the bodies and also to the roofs, but this creates like a poisonous mist in the air. So I decided I would cover up the camera lenses for that section to avoid tainting them forever. So instead you're joining me on the final step before assembly, and that is applying the glazing into the coaches themselves. So this glazing is made out of some CD sleeves that I bought very cheaply. I printed off onto regular paper a guide with black lines to show where I should cut the windows out, used a bit of Pritt stick or just a stick of glue to glue the CD cases to that piece of paper, then cut out along the lines, peeled the plastic off, apply a bit of PVA glue to the inside of the bodies, and then glued the windows in place. And that's a really nice easy method to just put some glazing into any model really. So like I say, this was the final step. Once this is done, I'm going to assemble them and then we will be ready for the final reveal. 
So that is project complete. And I really enjoyed this one, actually. It's just been a great, great challenge from start to finish, creating an entire set of coaches. And to be honest, the whole painting process didn't take all of that long. I managed to do it all in one day, yesterday. Last thing, last night, I put on a coat of gloss varnish so that it could dry all night. And then this morning, I've popped up, put the windows into place. And then the part you haven't seen yet is me putting them onto the chassis and fitting the roofs. And so I'm about to do the final reveal. So let's take a look. Here is the second class coach. And remember, I was going for unique Sam Strains coaches, and these are definitely unique. They don't look a whole lot, well, to my knowledge, they don't look a whole lot like anything else in the world of railways. So I think that is quite a success, and I'm quite pleased with the way the roof looks. Yeah, it's quite a nice glossy finish, bit of a quality shine to it. That's very cool. Let's take a look at the next coach then. So this is the first class coach. Yeah, again, from the outside, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but of course, inside, there is all of that extra detail. And then finally, the one that does look a little bit different from the outside. This is the third class brake, which is designed to go on the back of a train. And uh, yeah, overall, quite pleased with all of the designs. So, of course, the final thing I need to do is put them onto the track. In fact, they haven't even been together yet. So I'll do that for the first time on camera. We'll find a loco that sort of matches them in terms of livery. And I've got an idea. I think I know what I'm going to do. And uh, we'll try them for the first time uh, if they derail we're going to be in trouble. Oh, and they weigh about 35 grams each. So not dreadfully heavy, but not too bad, I don't think. And probably adequate for wagons or coaches of that size. Right, let's put them on the track. So the choice of locomotive for these coaches was very easy. I've gone with the Caledonian 812 because I think the shade of blue might be quite close. I didn't you know, intend it to look Caledonian, but the blue with the white lining, you can kind of see the similarity. So Let's see what the new coaches look like with the Caledonian 812. Let's pop the brake on to start with. Let's see if it's nice and free. Ah, that's not bad, is it? All right. And I'm going to try and get these on in um, so that they're all facing the same way. So we will do the third class one next and verify that they couple together. Let's see if this one's free rolling. Yeah, seems to be. All right, let's couple those. Ooh, are they together right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's try another one. I've got floppy couplings now, they're okay, I think. Um, and then this one, let's put the steps at the back again. All right, and this is the first class one, of course. There we go. And uh, you'll notice they are relatively close coupling. Let's go in a bit closer. And the close coupling was necessary, really, because otherwise, due to the fairly wide wheelbase, I would have to make pivoting couplings, and I have done a design for those, but they do sort of take up more space, so it's better to have them a bit closer and then not need the, the close couplings. Right, I'll do this by hand. Oh. Ah, the Caledonian's coupling hook missed the uh, 3D printed coupling. Tut, tut, tut. Right, uh, let's see what they look like together. Actually, not bad at all. They almost look like they were made specifically for the Caledonian Loco, don't they? It's quite a, quite a nice effect. So, do they actually run properly together as a rake? Okay, Caledonian, take it away. Not too fast, please, because I don't want to scratch the paintwork. Okay. About 30. All right, they're coming up to the curve. <laughs> and they seem okay. Not speaking too soon, no, no, they seem okay. So that's the worst curve over with. If they work on that, they should work everywhere else. And I am so, so happy with these. I mean, I think I will actually use them, you know, just for short trains, pre-grouping trains where I perhaps don't have any more suitable rolling stock. That's definitely the case with the 812. What have I got for that, the old trying ones? So for locos like this, I think these are gonna be a lot of fun to run. And of course, you know, they're not very prototypical, but they are blue and that sort of seems to work with quite a few different liveries. So I think it was worth doing. I think I've got something quite valuable out of it. Not to mention what I've learned about pinstriping and painting and liveries and painting interiors and designing. So even in terms of the skills that this has helped me to develop, uh, this was absolutely well worth it. And these coaches are going to be for sale. Um, I do a monthly wagon or coach uh, for my channel members. 
and uh, these are going to come out um, separately. So I'll, one month I'll do the third class, uh, another month I'll do the first class, another month I'll do the break. So if you'd like to get some of these, I will be selling them. I haven't 100% decided on the price yet, but it's going to be minimum £10, maximum £15, somewhere in between there, most likely. Um, unpainted, and then you can obviously paint them in whatever livery you like. But thank you for watching this project. It's been a lot of fun. I, I love doing stuff like this, and I have another project in the works, another locomotive, in fact. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you very soon. All right, folks, catch you next time.